In this video, I'm gonna show you how to photograph real estate or how to become a real estate photographer. And in either case, you may need to invest into some additional equipment in order to set yourself apart from the other photographers or other real estate agents around you. So to begin, at real high level, uh, the equipment I use is gonna be my tripod, my photographer head mount, my flash, my shutter release, of course my camera, and also my lens. All of these together help me get the best image possible for real estate agents in my area. And let me explain. My tripod is a lower end uh, Manfrotto tripod. It's a prestigious brand. Even though it's on the lower end of the price spectrum, it's still a pretty solid tripod. I've had it for about five years and the head mount I have on it is a photographer ball head mount. And when I say photographer ball head mount, you also have a, vid uh, a video fluid head mount. And the video allows you to swivel sideways and up and down, but it doesn't let you uh, turn the camera completely on its side. You still have to keep the camera uh, in the position that you mount it in. And with the photographer ball head camera, it allows you to level the image properly and also get vertical images if you need it uh, for those tight spaces such as bathrooms or laundry rooms. The shutter release that I have is very basic. It's not even name brand, it's, it's uh, generic, it's Pro Masters. And I have it right here. And basically it's a two part, it's a two part system. Um, one goes into the camera and this part just goes on the side of the camera and I can click it. Um, and the reason why I use this is because I take a three shot bracket um, for my exposures as a multi-shot exposure is HDR and I'm gonna go into that in just a minute. Uh, but what this allows me to do is take three shots at the same uh, frame without worry about shaking or me losing position of, of the shot. And also in low light conditions, um, there's a risk with handheld that you're gonna get motion blur. And having the tripod and the shutter release, it prevents any movement in the camera for me to be able to get the best image possible in low light conditions. The flash that I use is, again, another generic piece of equipment because name brand would just be way too expensive. This is a wireless transmitter and this has a wireless receiver inside the flash. And what this allows me to do is mount this transmitter on top of my camera, set the settings I need, and then do window pulls with, with the flash. So I can do window pulls and also a bounce flash uh, to eliminate harsh shadows or to even out the white balance when it comes to, uh, to room lighting. So this right here is a flash point flash system. Um, it has a two gigahertz radio frequency and also has a, a, a receiver in this flash in order to pick it up. And this flash is amazing. I really like it. And there are a lot of reviews saying that it works well with a Sony camera. I do have a Sony camera, it's my Sony a7S, and I can vouch that it does work really well with the system. Um, but there are also reviews warning people from using off-brand flash systems with, with Sony that you want to use the Sony flash system. And for me, that's just way too expensive. I really don't uh, like to be forced into proprietary uh, equipment. So the camera I use, like I mentioned, is a Sony camera. It's a Sony A7S. It's about three years old and it's a full frame camera. And I really like to use it because not only is it a full frame camera, but it allows me to work in low light conditions. It has one of the best sensors for low light and also the color and image quality from it is just phenomenal. I'm not gonna go into the specifics between full frame and crop frame unless you want me to, um, but what the full frame allows me to do is if a lens says 16 to 35 millimeter uh, field of view, then I'm gonna get that 16 to 35 millimeter field of view. If it's a crop sensor, you are going to do some math to figure out what the true field of view is for that lens. Um, and the lens that I am using right now is a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. And I really like this lens because it doesn't have uh, very much lens distortion. Now all lenses, even higher end lens, is gonna have some sort of distortion. But from my experience with this lens, it has very minimal distortion when it comes to real estate photography. I'm able to cover a wide area without uh, fish eye view. And that's one view that you do want to avoid is the fish eye view. And that's basically the circular edges around the images. Uh, Lightroom can reduce it, but it won't eliminate it. And with the 16 millimeter to 35 millimeters ice lens that I have, Lightroom can completely eliminate uh, that lens distortion and properly um, set that lens correction 
for the best image possible. So the best lens to use for real estate photography, if you have the money, is gonna be a 24 millimeter tilt shift lens. And what this allows you to do is, when I take my shots, because it's not a tilt shift lens, I have to keep my shots um, parallel with the ground, uh, perpendicular to the walls. And that allows me to get straight edges, uh, vertical and horizontal lines. And I can't look up, otherwise I'm gonna distort those lines and I can't look down because I may distort those lines as well. Now, with a tilt shift lens, it allows you to look up and down and correct inside the lens uh, those vertical and horizontal lines so that way you get the best image possible. So if you wanna show flooring space, you can aim the camera down and then adjust the lens to where everything is vertical and you have that, uh, that floor space that you can look at and it doesn't look distorted. If you wanna look up at the ceiling, at the vaulted ceilings, you can do that, correct your horizontal lines and you won't have any distortion or very minimal distortion. With mine, if I were to do it, you're gonna see these vertical lines go in or go out depending on what direction I aim the camera and it just doesn't look very good, it doesn't look very professional and so, for the most part, I try to keep my camera as level as possible unless I absolutely have to either look up or down uh, on the structure. The ideal field of view that you want to use is going to be a 24 millimeter. Now, a 24 millimeter, the reason why that's suggested is because when you look into a room, that's what the eye naturally sees is going to be a 24 millimeter field of view. Uh, when it comes to cinematics, you're looking at 50 millimeter view, but that doesn't apply to what we're talking about right now. So the best type of lens for real estate photography is gonna be your 24 millimeter uh, tilt shift lens, but that's gonna be ridiculously expensive. The next one's gonna be a 24 millimeter lens, but you're gonna be too close to be able to get any good shots without that tilt shift capabilities. And the second or third best lens that you can get for real estate photography is gonna be that 16 to 35 millimeter lens. So when it comes to your camera settings, there's a few things that you wanna make sure that your camera is set in. First of all, that your image aspect ratio is set at 3 to ratio, not at 16-9. 16-9 is what you're viewing this video in right now. A 3 to ratio is gonna be an almost square. People love these type of photos because the image looks more full. Uh, it doesn't look too, doesn't look long and narrow. Um, you can see more of the ceiling, you can see more of the ground. Another setting I wanna make sure that my camera is set up with is the aperture. The aperture I use is between 9 and 11 f-stop. Now this allows you to get a focal length a lot deeper than a narrow f-stop such as uh, 4 or 1.8. Now what that means is, have you ever seen a photo close up of a portrait of the person being in view but the foreground and the background being blurry? That blur is called bokeh and the lower that f-stop is, the, the more tight and the more focused the main subject is gonna be and the more blurred out the foreground and background is gonna be. So the larger you have that number, the more clarity it's gonna be in the foreground and the background. Now you don't wanna go too deep uh, into the f-stop like f-stop 22. At 22, you're gonna wanna keep your shutter open a lot longer, which invites more camera shake, which will potentially blur your image to render it useless, essentially. And so you wanna keep that happy medium. You don't want a lot of blur, but at the same time, you don't want to invite motion blur into your camera. So from my experience, uh, f-stop between 9 and 11 is optimal when taking real estate photographs. My ISO for real estate photography is always 320. If you keep it at 100, which is basically less sensitive, um, it means that you're gonna have to keep your shutter open a lot longer, which then invites that motion blur, which you don't want. Um, but at the same time, with having ISO 100, you do eliminate grain in your image. And the higher you go in ISO, the more grain you invite. It's basically your you're sacrificing um, quicker photos for less quality photos. So when I say quicker photos, what I mean is if your ISO is at 1600, you can take photos you know, hand, handheld really quickly without having uh, a lot of motion blur, but you do get a lot of artifacts or a lot of grain in your image, which basically makes it look not as good, not as clear. Now, if you go down to 100, you will need a tripod uh, to take your photos, but at the same time, when it comes to the three-shot bracket that I do with my, with my multi-exposure photos, there are some noticeable differences between 100 and 320. So between the ISOs, you know, the higher end and the lower end, 320 has been that happy medium, and there are other photographers, real estate photographers, that have reported that 320 ISO is optimal for real estate photography. And also the other settings I use is, again, with that three-shot bracket, 
I have um, my camera set up on a three shot bracket setting at, two, uh, at a two stop interval. So meaning that my first photograph is going to be at the proper exposure, it's going to be exactly what it should be. The next photograph is going to be underexposed by, um, by two stops, so it's going to be a lot darker. And then the last photo is going to be overexposed by two stops. But all of these get the range and light that I need in order to make the best photo possible. So it gets the dark darks, the light lights, and also everything in between. And then I'm able to play with that information to make the best photo I can. So how do you take HDR photos? Well actually a lot of phone nowadays support HDR automatically into their photographs. So if you're a real estate agent, just make sure that your, that your phone settings, your camera settings are set on HDR and it's on, not on auto, but on by default. And so what this means is your, your phone is going to get three images automatically and process that and compress it to be the best image that it can produce by itself. Now you can do some other editing on top of that, but if your image is going to be a JPEG, um, then basically it's compressed as much as it can be for optimal use on your phone and it won't give you as much data to play with for the lighting or the color. But you can take really good photos with your phone. Now if you are using a DSLR camera, there should be settings in your DSLR camera that allow you to do the three shot bracket. And if you can customize it, I would recommend the two, um, the two f-stop interval so that way you can get all of the light range that you need and also the color range that you need to produce the best photo possible. Okay, so what I do is I go into a room and I level vertically and, and horizontally the camera. And then I'll do the three shot burst and that'll give me basically something to work with to create a high quality HDR photograph. I'll take that into, into Lightroom, I'll do all of my presets there, and then I'll combine all of the images together, and Lightroom has somewhat of a decent way of combining three images together for an HDR effect, but then I have to go in there and tweak it um, to do all the fine tuning. But then after it renders its HDR image, which is still raw by the way, and when I say raw, um, DSLR cameras have the capability of taking two types of photograph. Uh, RAW and JPEG. JPEG is going to be compressed, you're not going to be able to do as much with it. RAW saves all of the information into the image, it's almost like a, like a digital negative where you can do uh, all of the adjustments you need. You can, you can make the skies bluer, the grass greener, you can pull in um, better lighting uh, that you see with your, with your naked eye. You can do all of these adjustments with RAW. And so with Lightroom, when it creates the HDR effect, it's still going to keep it in the RAW format. And then I can do the fine tuning to make the best image possible. So out of all this, what do real estate photographers typically charge? Um, and I can't speak for most photographers. What I can speak to is what I've seen. And they'll either charge uh, by the number of photos, which is, you know, it can start as little as five, it can go up to 35. And I think 35 or 50 has been the most that I've seen somebody actually offer in a package. And typically it's gonna have a base price. And then from there, depending on how many photos you need, um, then you're paying extra for that. Also, when it comes to aerial photos, you're going to be paying extra for that typically because there's insurance involved, there's licensing that's involved, and then, you know, it's just the liability of, you know, putting a drone up in the air and taking the risk to, uh, to take those photos for you. Another aspect that I, that I have seen is uh, other photographers will charge extra, typically $200 plus for a slideshow video, and that's in addition to the photos that you're paying for. And so with me, I, I do something a little different. I charge 12 cents per square foot, and so basically that means is you get all the photos you need to showcase the home. There is no cap, there is no limit, and you're guaranteed to get everything that you need to showcase that home. I'm gonna consult with you before the shoot to ask, okay, what's the, what are the features of the home that you wanna highlight? Do the appliances stay? Are there anything uh, like backsplashes or countertops you want me to, to get close up on? Are there any outside structures, uh, terrain, um, amenities that are part of the HOA or part of the complex uh, of your home or condo? Uh, things like that is, is what I'm gonna try to get from you so that way I can get all the shots needed to showcase your home the best I can. So 12 cents per square foot, that gets you advanced HDR photos, and that's the same technique that, that luxury photographers use. That gets you unlimited aerial photos, and that gets you a slideshow video with your branding in it, and, uh, and licensed music to showcase your home properly. If you found this video helpful, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any questions um, or you want to go deeper into anything I talked about, please leave that in the comment section below or you can contact me at contact at